I'm Kanika. I'm an entrepreneur and a mom of three, twins plus one. I'm passionate about all things lifestyle, organizing, and mindful parenting. As the adage goes, nine months on, nine months off. For a woman, we're, when we put on the baby weight, it takes about nine months, and it takes about nine months to lose the baby weight. But for many of us, it's not that simple. And imagine having the added pressure of being in the spotlight on TV, where a camera sadly adds 10 pounds, um, all while juggling life with a new baby. And this is someone who has done it all and more, Mara Schiavocampo. She is a four-time Emmy-winning journalist, a chart-topping podcast host, and a best-selling author of her book, uh, Thin Spired, which is a weight loss memoir of how she lost 90 pounds after her first baby. She's here to tell us her story and give us some tips along the way. Mara, thank you so much for being on That's Total Mom Thank you, thanks for having me. <laughs> it is such a treat. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so let's dive right in. Um, I feel like, let's start from the beginning. You don't know where you're going until you know where, you're, you're, where you've been from. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about who Mara is and your childhood. Hmm, that's such a, a layered question. Hey. <laughs> so um, I'm originally from Maryland. That's uh -huh. where I grew up, right outside of DC. Um, my father worked for the World Bank. My mother is a professor. And um, because of my father's job, we traveled a lot. Uh, and we lived overseas and it, we weren't living in, uh, we were living in developed nations, developing nations. And so, you know, they weren't, um, it wasn't like we were living in Paris, you know, we lived in Somalia, we, you know, before I was born, my parents spent some time in the South Pacific. Um, the youngest of three, uh, I'm a baby. Yeah. And, you know, it was just always a very, there was always an adventure, you know, I grew up with all these adventures without really knowing that I was having a unique experience. Mm. Uh, you know, I remember I would go like warthog hunting in East Africa with my dad when I was wow. six years old. And we had to like get up at five in the morning and I remember like watching them like butcher the warthog in the field. Um, and these were, I mean, I remember seeing my dad's friends shoot antelopes. And these were, and I'm, I'm of such a huge animal lover, so like I'm not into hunting like today, but yeah. it was just part of my upbringing. And I didn't really realize how unique that was until much later, but it always gave me this thirst for adventure. Mm -hmm. um, so I say yes to pretty much everything. I just want to like drink a life, you know? Yeah, absolutely. That's so cool. So why journalism? Why did you go into that field and that path? Uh, I wanted a career where I could write okay. and where I could travel. Mm. And when I looked around and tried to figure out, okay, where do those two things intersect? Right. It was journalism. Oh, it was, okay. you know, it was clear as day. You are one person who has made it to the top. You know, you're working in New York, the number one network um, in the States, and it's like, it's incredible that you reach that. So, um, so tell us about that journey. Um, you know, things always look different from the inside and they always feel very different from the inside. So from my perspective, it's always been like head down on the grind, uh, get the work done. And, you know, it's I've been driven very much by the work. Yeah. So to, you know, when I hear people introduce me like four time Emmys and like it, it, it doesn't, it, that's, that hasn't been my internal experience. You know, my internal experience has been like working like a dog. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, that's just what it is. Like, it's not glamorous. Um, it's not sexy. It's work. Yeah. And so if you don't love the work, like people don't realize, like when you're watching somebody live on television at seven in the morning and they're in a different time zone, it may be two in the morning where they are. Right. And they're in the cold, in the dark, in the middle of nowhere where like some bear attack happened, right? <laughs> And like oh I, I had to get up at midnight and like put lashes on yeah. and like, like people like there is a grind. It's right. a grind. And yeah. then when that live shot is done, you're on an airplane and you're going to the next place and the next thing. So that's been my focus really is just the, the grind. Yeah. And how has that changed you? I mean, now you're a mom of two. So you've you've dealt with that challenge yeah. and now you've taken on a new one. What's that? Like? I mean, I feel like it really prepared me very well for parenthood because, mm. you know, when you're 
flying by the seat of your pants for 15 years and it's also like it's a physical job like you know you're helping cameramen carry gear and you're you know traveling a lot which is very like it takes a physical toll on you so those things actually really prepare me you know very little sleep and working under pressure and so I kind of now like it's hard to phase me yeah like you know with you know a kid like throws up on the floor or all over me or in an <laughs> uber it's like all right like let's like clean it up and on to the next thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> just, you Good just for keep you. it moving. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, you've seen it all. And I've so you just roll with the budget. Like I've put, I've put makeup on in the middle of a hurricane. Like I've just, this, this, can I curse? Yes. Like the shit that I've had to do for work, you know, yeah. like in the, I've been in the Congo for five days without a shower, like, you know, Oh my gosh. Dealing with the toddler is kind of like quaint and fun <laughs> in comparison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then tell us about like, um, weight and the issues around that. Yeah. I, I think that, I mean, that's something that all women face. We yeah. can think back to, um, you know, our adolescence or even before that, um, tween days where we just think about weight, obsess about yeah. weight. Well, you know, it's such a kind of an unfair paradox that women are expected to keep, you know, their same weight through, like from pretty much from their teenage years through death, yeah. right? <laughs> when you have all the, these childbearing years that take they have your body so much is demanded of your body mm -hmm. but the expectations don't make any room for that right? right there's there's no allowance for what you're going through during those years you're just expected to still adhere to the same standards right. and it's really 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 unfair mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's an unfair and it's a really high standard yeah. but a lot of us still, for better or for worse, want to meet that standard. Right. And so I try not to be judgmental of women who are like, no, I want to lose the baby weight right away. Like, ideally, we'd be in a, in a situation where people would give themselves a year, two years, and feel great about that journey. But that's yeah. not always reality. Yeah. And so I feel like we, all, we have to have these conversations based on what's real, yes, right? Because yes. like I met a woman, I was shopping, I was at the register, she had her baby with her, the baby was tiny, tiny, mm -hmm. and I was like talking to her about the baby and she was buying jeans and she starts crying at the register and she was like, I thought I'd be in my regular clothes by now. Yeah. And so like that's real, so yeah. let's have the conversation like based on that reality. When did the Inspired even come to your mind? Um, because you know, speaking from your own experience, how did it come to be? That yeah, you that, to share that was all very, very organic. So after I had my daughter, I wanted to um, lose a baby weight mm -hmm. just because I didn't want to buy new clothes, right? Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. I want to go back to work in my same clothes. Like yes. that was my goal. Right. And so it was a different weight loss experience than like in the past where weight gain was always tied to like a shame, right? Mm -hmm. Of like, oh, I'm lazy or I'm whatever. And this was like, no, I have a really good reason for having gained the weight. So yeah. for some reason, removing that shame kind of freed me. Ooh, yes. um, and I was like, okay, well, I just have to figure out what's gonna work for my body. Mm -hmm. um, and so I figured out, you know, a couple things that worked for me. And a lot of what I learned was very counter to what society tells you. You know, one of the big things that we always hear is everything in moderation, everything in moderation. Well, for a lot of us, certain foods have addictive qualities. Yes. And so you can't eat them in moderation any more than an alcoholic can have a drink in moderation. It's an it's an unattainable standard. Right. And so once I realized that, I was like, oh, there are certain things that I cannot have in moderation ever. I'm always going to have an abusive relationship with this thing. Yeah. So then I have a choice to make. Do I still want to keep it in my life or do I want to eliminate it completely? Okay. And I decided to eliminate certain things completely. Okay. Now, there's a school of thought where people say, okay, well, restrictive diets don't work or they're not good for you psychologically. That's like, God bless people who feel that way. Mm -hmm. My experience has been that eliminating certain things has been tremendously freeing because I'm not trying to have a little bit of something that is always calling me and always beating me. Uh, it's just gone. Yeah. It's just, it's just not there. Wow. When you were a new mom, did you um, work out with the baby? No. Okay. I do not believe in working out with your kids. Okay. No, I see that happen. I see people running with the strollers and all that. That yeah. is like, if that's great for them, great. Or maybe it's out of necessity, right? right? right, right Which right. like, I get that too. Yeah. I do not want to work out with my children. Okay. My work out, that's my time. Yes, 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 so, yes. No. I believe the same thing. <laughs> if you can, you know, have the childcare, do that right. and then yeah take that one hour class uninterrupted yeah, yeah. it's just because it's it's for me it's mental more than anything right that's why i keep going back you know yeah. it, it's like i sweat that shit out and yes. then life is so much clearer and better after yeah 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 absolutely tell us about like a mom sense moment that you had 
Oh, I have to think about that a little bit. I, what I've gotten very good at is is um, the ability to see that a, a disaster is about to happen. Okay. Like, and that took some years of honing. Yeah. But like when they are cool. about to fall flat on their face, and you like reach out and grab them by the <laughs> collar, and you like just, and people are like, "Wow, good catch, mom!" And it's like, well, "I know." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that kind of thing, like predicting disaster, or like when they're like about to spill the glass, right, and you right, like, right. and you catch it right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, and that that's just because you've seen the glass fall 50 times. Exactly, you're like, yeah. You can, but that reflex is there. You, you see know? it ahead, yeah. That's so cool. Lastly, a quote that you live by. Oh, I have a couple. Um, one that's big for me is I can handle it. So like not being afraid of something being too hard or too challenging or it, whatever it is, I can handle it. Mm. Just like confidence in your own strength, right. even in the face of the unknown. Um, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. So I try to stay prepared okay. and that's in a practical way. Like yeah. always have a bomb ass dress, like right. in case you get a last minute invite to something <laughs> right. fabulous, you know, like exactly. have a plan for yeah. those things yeah, yeah. Um, or like a great bathing suit, you know, yeah, just you just never know. Stay ready. <laughs> I mean, you're staying ready with the meals too. It's right. like, you don't know, you're going around the city. You don't know when you're going to get hungry and you have your fresh direct in your back. Yeah, just, stay prepared. Yeah. Stay prepared. So I would go with those two. Okay, cool. Um, and how can our listeners and viewers find you and your book? And um, so Instagram is the easiest way. That's the, I'm not really active on any other social media. Mm -hmm. um, so it's at Mara uh, Scampo, at Mara S. Campo. Okay. Thank you so much, Thank Mara. You. You're the best. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs>